for this video, what we're going to talk about is just some general um, general concepts about quantitative genetics. We're going to solve a, a quick problem about um, about uh, called, what's called response to selection, um, which is what you do in say a breeding program in terms of trying to um, breed better cows or make corn that has a higher oil content. Um, you know, may, or may make little tiny monies to, to, in terms of for pets or whatever it is. So you're trying to breed for a particular trait. How can you look at, take from a population, certain individuals, say um, your biggest pigs, and then breed your two biggest pigs? And what can you expect for the size, of, size for offspring? Um, that's going to be a function of the size pigs that you choose to breed, but as well as the gen the overall average uh, size of the pigs in your population that you've chosen them from. Um, and so that's what we call a response to selection. We'll also look at a, at a, at a problem um, uh, that has to do with uh, some uh, kind of just looking at correlation and a very simple additive uh, genetics type of a problem as well. Um, so for this first question, what we're looking at is... Uh, it, the question is that is just a, a hypothetical, but not completely hypothetical. Um, this is the way uh, blood cholesterol works. It actually uh, is probably similar in uh, in what we're looking at here is blood pressure. Um, but here we're saying that you're a clinical researcher um, trying to identify genetic risk factors uh, on high blood pressure, um, and you know that there are lots and lots of different genes, um, and you want to start studying these in terms of quantitative genetics. And so uh, the question is, what kind of information would you need? Do you need to know the genotype of every individual? Um, do you need to know all the different genes that are at risk? And, and you don't, um, because all that you need to do to be able to answer this question is you actually just need a population of individuals that you have blood pressure for, and you need information about their parents' blood pressure, okay? Because all that you need to be able to do is be able to do what's called, it's, Use a color we can see. A response. Uh, uh, we want to do a um, what's called a parent offspring regression. In which case, well, all we're going to do is we're going to plot the average blood pressure of an individual's parents against the. Um, the average blood pressure of the individuals that we have. Um, so we'll we'll take a, we'll have individuals and we'll plot against them um, their the parents' uh, uh, blood pressure, and uh, and this is what we call a, a parent offspring regression because then what we can do is we can draw a best fit line, and that best fit line, the slope of that line will be what we call our narrow sense heritability, or the amount of um, the amount of genetics specifically additive genetics that contributes to that particular trait and so additive genetics are the of the three different types of genetics and quantitative genetics we have added additive genetics dominant genetics and, and gene interactive uh, uh, type effects dominant effects uh, for genetics is things like when we talk about Mendel's P's those sorts of things of, of dominant versus recessive gene interaction is um, is when multiple genes are interacting. This is an example of this is epistasis, um, something like Bombay phenotype. Um, the other type of type of genetics is what we call additive genetics. Now, additive genetics is um, is where we have this additive effect of different genes that add to a particular trait. Why additive genetics is often kind of a focus of quantitative genetics is because one, it's easy to get to because by doing a parent offspring regression, the best fit line slope is our narrow sense heritability, which is a measure of our additive genetics. Now that slope, if we get that slope and that slope is a one, well, that means that we have all of the effects. Uh, the So if we have um, variability of our added genetics, what portion of our phenotypic variability is due to our added genetics, that's what we call narrow sense heritability. If all of the trait is governed by the additive genetics, or VA, then, then 
the variability that we see in the phenotype is due to the variability in the additive genetics. Our ratio here is one, and then our, so therefore our slope of our line is one. Whereas if it's purely environmental, in which there's no additive genetics playing a role, then our VA value would be zero, which means our slope would be zero because the, the H squared would be zero. Now, if we have a scenario where we have um, kind of combination of additive genetics and other factors like environmental factors, then our slope of our line is going to be a little bit, is not going to be one or zero, it'll be somewhere in between. Okay, so now um, what this next is just, okay, so draw a, a graph assuming that uh, in A, let's assume that the environment plays no role. In B, we'll say that the environment completely determines the individual's blood pressure. In C is that there's about an equal. So if we were to plot these graphs, uh, one thing we would have to do is we uh, kind of label our axes. So on the uh, on one axis, individuals' blood pressure versus um, the parents' blood pressure. And if um, in scenario one, if the environment plays no role, that's where all of the variation is due to the additive genetics. That means our slope's going to be one. Okay. Now, if environment completely plays a role in which there's no additive genetics, that means our slope is zero. So then it gives us a flat line. Okay. And then if in C, if we got about equal influences, well, that means our slope is about a five uh, or is one half. And so um, in which we're playing uh, about equal parts into it. Now, one thing to know is is that if your slope here is, it's not a perfectly zero slope. This would be zero slope. If your slope is zero, your narrow sense heritability is zero, does not mean there is no genetic component to that trait um, because all that this is a measure of is the additive genetics. It doesn't take into account the dominant effects or the interaction effects and so there could be other genetic factors such as dominant genes that may play a role in um in blood pressure okay and that's what we see in in uh in ldl cholesterol for instance okay so now the next problem on this worksheet here is uh is looking at what's called a response to selection so a response to selection is, as i had indicated it's a way of making predictions of what your uh, what your offspring are going to be given mating any two parents from a given population for a particular trait. And so in this example, what we're, um, in this example, it's a, a rabbit farmer and the rabbit farmer is, is going to try breeding for bigger rabbits in this, in this case, just because so that the average body weight of, of his population is three kilograms. Um, he selects the 10 largest rabbits in his population, and the average rate is 4 kilograms, um, and he interbreeds them. And if the heritability for body, body weight, in this case it's narrow sense heritability, um, for body weight in the rabbit population is 0.7, what is the expected body weight for, um, for the offspring? This is what we call a response to selection, um, a, a response to selection problem in which what we're the the formula is r is our response to selection is equal to the narrow sense heritability times what's called the selection differential now the selection differential is the difference between the average of your individuals that you're going to be breeding and the average of the population and so in this case the individuals that we're breeding are um, these 10 largest rabbits so their average body weight is four kilograms and so we're going to so to get s is going to be equal to four kilograms minus the average of the population which is three kilograms so s is equal to one we're told that our heritability for body weight in this population is 0.7, so h squared is equal to 0 0.7. And so in order to calculate the response to selection, we're going to say 0 0.7 times 1, so r is equal to 0 0.7. And so what this means is the response to selection. And so this is, by pulling out 
on average four kilogram rabbits doesn't mean that the offspring are going to be four kilograms it means that the offspring are likely since the breeding rabbits are larger than the population the offspring are likely to be larger than the average population uh, the average rabbit in the population but they're not going to probably be the same size as the breeding parents so this is response to selection is this is where is actually going to be in kilograms that is how much gets added to the average population weight for um and that'll tell you what you can expect to have for offspring and so if we take three plus that 0 0.7 what we're going to get is 3.7 kilograms so on average given a 0.7 her narrow sense heritability within this population that we could expect that if we took four kilogram rabbits in a population that is on average three kilograms that the offspring of those rabbits would be 3.7 kilograms so that's what we refer to as a response to selection okay now uh the next piece of this worksheet this has got a, all kinds of different stuff um so this this next piece of this worksheet is just kind of uh is another is more of a thought question about um relationships and the way correlation works and so when we're um looking at how correlation works here we have narrow sense heritability of wing length in Drosophilus 0.8. Okay, so 0.8 is a is a strong correlation. Um, so that means that the genetics are going to play a strong role, and that the parent, um, because the narrow sense heritability, the additive effects is the primary contributor to parent and, and offspring similarity. So what whatever our parents are, we can expect the offspring to be similar in terms of wing length. Okay, and then here we're talking head width. So again, it's close to one. So that's a, a strong correlation. Um, and, a, and a lot of, in terms of heritability, that means that there's a strong additive genetics component. And so there will be a lot of similarity between the parents and the offspring. Okay, so we can kind of make assumptions about given a set of parents what the offspring will be. And then the genetic correlation between wing length and head width is a minus 0.86. So that's the, the correlation between wing length and head, length, head width. And so what that minus 0.6 means that we have an inverse relationship, which means, and so uh, this 0.86, it means we have an inverse relationship. So if we say um, plot wing length, the head width um, we're going to have an inverse relationship the slope would be minus 0.86 so close to one but in the other direction so what this means is that that's it's an in, they're inverse related so as you increase uh, as you increase the value of one trait you're going to decrease the value of another of the other so as you increase wing length Okay. as you increase wing length you're going to decrease head width okay so or as you increase head width you decrease you decrease uh, as you increase on your head width you're going to decrease on your wing length and vice versa okay so that's what we refer to as a negative relationship or an inverse uh, correlation or inverse relationship now this is the last problem is just a as a um, kind of a quick simple uh, additive genetics problem here we have three loci they each contain two alleles um, the difference between height and two different strains the genes are additive and equal in their effects on the plant height one strain homozygous for this uh, lowercase letter is uh, 10 centimeters the other strain when you have all capital letters is 22 centimeters uh, so, so give the phenotypes and expected proportions of the f1 generation and so the F1 generation is going to be heterozygotes at all of those lo locations. Now, if each of those additive alleles contribute equally, again, here we have a problem where we have two extremes. We have, in this case, plant height, 22 centimeters and 10 centimeters. So what we need to do is find the difference. The difference between the two is 12 centimeters. Okay. Now, what we want to then want to do is say, okay, how much does each additive allele 
add to the base height of 10 centimeters. So we're going to divide by um, six because we have three genes, but each gene has two alleles. So what we want to do is figure out how many does each allele add to it. And so that each two centimeters per allele Okay, two centimeters per allele, and therefore um, these individuals that are uh, heterozygous for each of these, we have one, two, three. So three times two centimeters is six centimeters. Okay, and so each of these heterozygous, each of these heterozygous individuals have six centimeters added to the base height. So these are all going to be 16 centimeter plants. Okay. Some quick crash course through some basic concepts of quantitative genetics. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, have a great day.